transforming followers into leaders. We're so thankful that you tuned into the broadcast today. We pray that this message pushes you one step closer to your purpose and accomplishing your destiny. And now, let's go to the message. Good morning, Crown Church family. Listen, you know how I always start. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. As a matter of fact, this is the year. This is the new year that the Lord has made. Happy new year. Listen, you made it over. You crossed over and you're still here. Somebody go ahead and type that in the chat. I made it over. And if somebody else type, I'm still here. Listen, you got to declare it. This is a new season. This is a new year. Old things have passed away. Declare it. I want to share some Psalms with you real quick. Psalm 79 verse 13 says, So we, your people and sheep of your pasture, will give you thanks forever. We will show forth your praise to all generations. One more Psalm. Psalms 107 verse 8 says, Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Listen, family, this is the attitude that we need to adopt all year. As we start this year, as we start on a new journey, as we start on a new season, this is the attitude that we have to have, which is an attitude of gratitude and a heart of appreciation. Now, a lot of us, as we move forward at the top of the year, some of the things we usually do is, is this. This is the time of the year where people start making plans, people start setting goals, and people start having their resolutions laid out. And there is nothing wrong with that. Listen, as a church, we, what we usually do is we rally around a common theme and say, okay, this year we're going to focus on this theme or this word for the year. And I want to share that theme with you guys this year. And I want to say this, if you're going to stand on a theme, if you're going to stand or rally around a theme or a principle, it's always good to rally around one that's founded on the word of God. It's always good to rally around a principle that's based from the word of God. And so this principle can be found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, and it says this, Therefore, my brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Listen, family, hear me. The word that we're going to stand on for 2023 is consistency. Consistency is the word that we're going to stand on for 2023. Somebody type that in there. Consistency. I want everyone on this broadcast to type consistency in the chat. And if you're listening to this, just say it to yourself. Consistency. That's right. That is the word that we're going to stand on. That is our word for 2023. Now, let me go ahead and preface it and say this. This does not mean it's the word for everybody. This does not mean that it's the word for all of the churches. This is the word that we, Crown Church Orlando, we're rallying around this word, consistency. And I'm going to explain it, why this word is extremely important for us as we move forward into this new year. Listen, it is often said that nothing starts without commitment. But hear me, without consistency, nothing will ever finish. I'm going to say that again. Nothing starts without commitment, but without consistency, nothing will finish. Now, this is your year. Listen, this is the year that you are going to finish what you start. I'm going to declare some things over, over you right now, over your life, over your family. This is the year that you're going to finish what you start. This is the year that you're going to finish that project that you started those previous years, but for whatever reason, you couldn't get it done. This year, you're gonna get it done. This year is the year you finish that book. This is the year that everything that you have started and you probably started to wonder, when am I ever gonna get back to that thing? Am I ever going to finish it? Will I ever pick that thing back up? Yes, this year, everything that you started through consistency, 
you'll be able to finish it. Now, I do not doubt that you can start. I don't doubt that you can start. But the real question that we have to ask ourselves is, will we finish? I know we can start things and we're phenomenal at starting things. We start businesses, we start projects, we start relationships, we start fights. But the question is, can you finish what you start, except for the fight part, except for the fight part. But can you finish what you start that's adding value to society, that's adding value to your family, that's adding value to your relationships? Can you or will you finish what you start? Listen, I believe, I believe this. If we remain consistent in those things that we start, whether this year or the things that we've started from previous times, if we remain consistent, we will truly finish. Now, I want to give you the definition of consistency real quick. Consistency is a steadfast adherence to the same principles, course, and or form. That's a steadfast adherence to the same principles, course, and or form. So have you ever wondered why do people return to the same restaurants? Consistency. There's a consistency in the food that they serve there that they enjoy. There's a consistency in the service that they receive. So they return to it. Have you ever wondered why do people buy with a certain brand of automobile or a certain brand of home builders or a certain brand of, of, of cars or products or services? Consistency. The reason that people keep coming back over and over and over again is because of consistency. Here's one more. Have you ever wondered why certain people make or earn more than other people or other individuals? Consistency. There is a value in your consistency. When we are consistent, that increases our value. That makes us rare. Do you know how rare it is to show up on a consistent basis? Do you know how rare it is for people to be dependable for their words? And so that's why as we rally around this word, around consistency, we will truly experience all that God wants us to experience this year. Listen, if you plan, if you're going to plan to finish, right? If you plan to finish this year, because no, no one undertakes projects, no one embarks or in, in goes into certain endeavors without intending to finish. So if you're planning to finish, you also have to plan to be consistent. If you plan on achieving your goal, you also have to stay consistent. That is extremely important in everything that we are doing. In Nehemiah chapter six, verse 15 through 16, when you get a chance, I want you to take a look at that. But we see that they built or rebuilt the, the broken wall in 52 days. They rebuilt the broken wall in 52 days. And, and they were faced with opposition. They were faced with adversity. They were faced with intimidation. They were faced with plots, plans, and conspiracies from, from their opposition. And they still prevailed nonetheless. Why? Because they were consistent. Because they were consistent. Listen, family, I wish, I wish... I could tell you that you're not going to have setbacks. You will. I wish that I could tell you that you're not going to face trials and tribulations. You will. I wish that I could tell you that you won't have disappointments. You will. You will. But you know what? If you remain consistent, every trial, every tribulation, every setback, Every plot, scheme, conspiracy has to take a backseat to you finishing. It has to take a backseat to you accomplishing and achieving the mission if you remain consistent. Now, we know the hand of God was on Nehemiah. Now, now even in the midst of all of the opposition, God was with them. God was with them. But you know what else they were also faithful to do? They were faithful to be consistent. 
And there's a lot of times where God is with us. I mean, it is set up for us to accomplish, for us to reach and achieve. I mean, God has it laid out and God has it set up for us. But you know what? We are inconsistent. We are inconsistent. Hear me. Even if you experience these things, you must stay consistent. I'm going to say it again. Even if you experience those things, setbacks, failures, disappointments, heartache, betrayal, offense, you're going to have those things happen to you. But the real question is, how are you going to respond when they happen to you? It's not a matter of if, it's when they happen to you, how are you going to respond? And I'm here to tell you, remain consistent in your approach. Remain consistent. Somebody go ahead and type that in the chat. Say that to yourself. I got to remain consistent. I, I got to stay consistent. I don't, I don't know about anyone else. I don't know about everything else. But for me, the one thing that I can control, I can be consistent in my character. I can be consistent in my response. I can be consistent in the way I love people. Even when I don't get the love reciprocated, I can still be consistent. I'm not going to let someone else dictate when I'm consistent in my love, when I'm consistent in my faithfulness, when I'm consistent with my time, my talent, or my treasures. Remain consistent. Listen, listen, it may get hard. It will be hard. Stay consistent anyway. Your relationships are going to get tested. Stay consistent anyway. Some people may walk out on you. Some people may leave. Some people may betray you. As we go through this year, I want to encourage you, stay consistent. Resources may get tight. Stay consistent. Resources may flow into your life in abundance. Stay consistent. Listen, as we break this, this verse down in 1 Corinthians 15, when you are steadfast, right, and immovable, this is what it means. It means to be solid. It means to be firm. It means to be resolute firmly fixed and incapable of being diverted from the primary purpose or mission. So what I'm saying this year is when opposition come, when adversity come, when trials come, when distractions come, when all of the things we call life happens, here's what I want you to do. Remain solid, remain firm, remain firmly fixed. Remain incapable of being diverted from the primary purpose or mission. You got to stay on the court. You got to stay in the fight. Listen, this year is going to be a great year, but it is going to be a year where it may be filled with trials. It may be filled with tribulations. It may be filled with highs and lows. Regardless of what happens, I want you to remain consistent. I want you to remain consistent. And listen, we cannot be double-minded concerning our destiny. Hear me. We cannot be double-minded concerning our destiny. See, when we are double-minded concerning our destiny, a few things happen. When we are double-minded, we introduce instability into our lives when we are double-minded. When we are double-minded, we introduce insecurity into our lives. When we are double-minded, we introduce inconsistency just by allowing our minds to occupy or, or entertain two opposing thoughts. God is for me. God is against me. Insecurity, instability, inconsistency. See, we have to allow our minds. That's what the Bible says. We have to have the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. The Bible also tells us that whatsoever is lovely, whatsoever is pure. Think on these things because our mind can run away into the doubts, into the hate, into the fear. And all of a sudden we open the door for instability. We open the door for insecurity. We open the door for inconsistency. And so we, we cannot be double-minded concerning our destiny. Listen, if God showed it to me, I'm going after it. It doesn't matter who doesn't come with you. You got to go after it. It doesn't matter what anyone else says about your pursuit of purpose. 
you have to go after it. Whatever it is that God showed you, you have to go at it. You have to go at it relentlessly. You have to pursue it. You cannot allow the lack of support. You cannot allow the lack of, of friends. You cannot allow the lack of resources to stop you from pursuing what it is that God has said you can have. And you have to be fixed concerning your destiny. And this is why we're rallying around this word of consistency, because too many times we let people talk us out of our promises. Too many times we talk our own selves out of our promises because we have a few setbacks. We have a few seasons. We have a few things. Things doesn't go our way. And we start downsizing what God said for us to accomplish. But not you. Not this year. Hear me. Not you. Not this year. You're going after every promise. Whatever it is. Listen, I only want what God wants me to have. Nothing more. Whatever it is God says I can have, that's all I want. I don't want anything more. Whatever my lot is, David says, listen, don't give me too much that I forget about you. But at the same time, don't, don't, don't give me so less that I, I, I despise you. Essentially, I just want to be content in you. And my contentment in God has nothing to do with things. It is when I'm going after purpose. That's true contentment. And whatever comes with that, whatever comes along the way in the journey, it is what it is. It is what it is. And then it also says this after being steadfast and immovable, it says always abounding, always abounding means exceeding a fixed number. I love that. Or measure another way to put it to go above and beyond. Uh Oh, Uh Oh, let me go ahead. Look, look at somebody and say, go above and beyond. All right, look, look, look somebody to you, to you look, look at somebody else. I'm going to say it again. Look at somebody and say, go above and beyond. Type that in the chat. I got to go above and beyond. This is what it means. Always abounding. Like, you know what? I've met the minimum and I'm going to take it to another level. I've met the standard and I'm going to take it to another. If there's not a height, if there's not a ceiling, I'm going to create one. Always abounding, always abounding in the work of the Lord. We're going to get that in a second. Listen, most people can do the bare minimum over a short period of time, but that's what makes most people average. That's what makes most people mediocre. The thing that's going to set you apart, the thing that's going to set us apart, I want us to do the maximum over a long period of time. Most people can do the minimum, the bare minimum over a short period of time. But I want you to do the maximum over a long period of time. Listen, on the road of life, go the extra mile. There's less traffic on there. Most people just do enough to get by. Most people work enough just to make ends meet, but not you, not you. You're going to always abound this year. Somebody type that. I'm always abounding. Yeah, yeah, I like that, like that. Now, listen, when it comes to the work of the Lord, you should pursue to produce in large quantities. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. So when it comes to doing the work of God, the Bible talks about that whatsoever you do, do it with all your might as unto the Lord. I don't know where we get this mindset from that if we're doing it for God, God wants a charity output from us. Like, okay, God know my heart. Listen, he owns everything. The Bible says if we're going to do it, do it as unto the Lord. Do it with all of your might. So when you start that business and you're doing it as unto the Lord, you should be abounding. Listen, you should be producing in large quantities. Why? Because it's as unto the Lord. Because it's as unto the Lord. You shouldn't be trying to play and keep things small in our thinking and in our expression. Why don't you go for the maximum and let God determine where the reach or the ceiling is? You shouldn't predetermine the ceiling of your capacity. You shouldn't predetermine the ceiling of your potential. You should try to empty out as much creativity 
and talent and gift and ability that you have on the inside of you and let God determine your measure. Let God determine your limits, right? This is why Jabez prayed to him to increase his limit because he, 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 he realized he got to a point in his life where he went all and he did all that he could and he went to the source of increase, the one that could scale him which is God. God is the only one that can scale us. But a lot of times we're not even operating at 100% capacity. We're, we're playing it safe. And some of us, we're playing it scared. But not this year. Not this year. When it comes to doing the work of the Lord, you should pursue to produce. You should pursue to produce. You should pursue to produce. And not just producing, but producing in large quantities. Listen, Stop apologizing for the mediocrity of other people. Just do what it is that God created you to do. Pursue to produce, pursue to produce, pursue to produce in large quantities, in large quantities, in large quantities. Pursue to produce that, right? Now, as I'm making my way to close, I want you to understand a few things. In this series, in this series, there's a few things that we're going to cover. We're going to unpack this because this is our year. This is the year of consistency. Whatever it is that we do, we're not going to do or start anything that we are not consistent at finishing. Hear me. Type that in there. Do not start anything that you are not going to be consistent at finishing. Do not take on any projects. Do not take on any ventures. Do not take on any endeavors that you will not be consistent at finishing. The minute you commit to something, you need to pro provide the consistency to finish it. So there's a few areas that I want to list out for you, and then we're going to unpack it. You do not want to miss any part of this series because it's going to set the tone. It's going to set the stage for the rest of this year. This series here, this series of consistency, the first thing, the first area, right, where we're going to focus on being consistent in is we need to focus on being consistent in our roles. Yeah, there are, you're created a certain way. There's a part that you play in creation. There's a part that you play in humanity. There's a part that you play in your generation, in our generation. There's a part that you play. You, are, you have the leading role in your life, and you need to know what that is, and you need to know how to operate and be consistent in that. So that's the first area. You need to be consistent in the role that you play in your life. The second part is we need to be consistent. And I'm going to go in on this one. We need to be consistent in our relationships. If we'll be honest, some of our relationships are trash. Yeah, I said it. Some of our relationships are trash. We can do better with our relationships. We can do better in our connection to people. We can do better in our interaction with people. So you need to make sure you understand throughout this series, we're going to talk about how to be consistent in our relationships. The third area that we're going to unpack is how to be consistent in our responsibilities. Yeah, there are things that God expects of you. And you know what? There's some things that your boss expects from you. There's some things that your spouse, your friends, your family, society, there's some, you got some responsibilities. So what are those things? We're going to dive into that as well. And then lastly, you and I, we need to be consistent in our routines. Some of the things that we are experiencing is as a result of not having the proper routine in place. And we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about some of the routines that we should have in our lives so we can be as productive as possible. Listen, this is going to be a great year for you. This is going to be a great year for us, but we have to remain consistent. We have to remain consistent. We must remain consistent. There's no way about it. We must remain consistent. Why? Why? Because there are some things that we're supposed to start. There are some things that God wants us to start. There are some things that we need to start this year. Now is the time. But if we're going to start, we need to start with commitment. And the problem is this. Once we start that thing, we got we to gotta go through. We got to see it all the way through. 
we have to finish it. We have to finish it. We can't just start it because that's how people get depressed. So we have to finish it. So if we're going to start, we need to start with commitment. And if we're going to finish, we need to finish with consistency. Start with commitment. Finish with consistency. Yeah, this is the year of consistency. Let me go ahead and pray for you right now. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus and God, everyone under the sound of my voice, everyone tuned to this broadcast. I pray and thank you, O God, that grace is on our lives, especially those, O God, that have committed to you and submitted to you as Lord and Savior. We know that there is grace available for them. And those that may be far from you or don't know you, God, I thank you that you're drawing them near to you so they can experience this beautiful relationship in you, this peace that surpasses all understanding. God, I pray that as we step out in the things that you have called us to walk in, the things that we're committing to, God, may we have a tenacity and a fortitude to be consistent and not let up until that thing, that project, that assignment reaches completion. That is our prayer now. Thank you that this year is going to be a great year and that we will remain consistent in all the things that we are supposed to. We thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Family, listen. Consistency. Nothing starts without commitment, but nothing finishes without consistency. Make it a effort. Make, a, a, make it your aim. Right. Make it your aim to be consistent this year, to be consistent in everything that you got going on this year. And I promise you, you're going to have a safe, you're going to have a productive year. I love you and make sure all that you do is for his glory and his glory alone. Be blessed. Have a great day. Thank you for tuning into this broadcast. We pray that you were blessed by the message. If this ministry has truly added value into your life, then we want you to prayerfully consider supporting financially. Listed on your screen are several ways you can express your generosity. Allow me to say thank you for any past, present, or future contributions that you're led to give. Thank you also for joining us on this journey of transforming followers into leaders that impact, influence, and change the world. At Crown Church, all that we do is for His glory and His glory alone. Until next time, be blessed and have a great day.